All the way back in May of 2022, I was glancing over the Early Access page on Steam. Now, normally, I usually only grab a game in Early Access if it's piqued my personal interest or aligns with my taste and quality. Well, needless to say, I managed to find a game that excelled in both of those things and so much more. Turbo Overkill is an homage to the iconic boomer shooters made in the 90s, with an incredible focus on not only adapting on what made those games legendary, but creating a fine-tuned and extremely polished adrenaline-fueled adventure that I definitely was not prepared for, and honestly, you probably aren't either, but here we go. You play as a street cleaner named Johnny Turbo. He's half man, half machine, and a fully augmented badass. This cybernetic murder machine is sent in to clean up the streets of paradise. A cyber city overrun by augmented minions under the control of the world's most advanced AI named Sin. World domination is Sin's only objective, and nothing will get in the way of that. Well, except Johnny Turbo, of course. This game honestly has everything I would ever want and more. It has flying cars fully equipped with a minigun and rockets. It has a motorcycle that's outfitted with chainsaws on either side and even looks like a direct reference to Akira. And it even lets you control a mech to level the playing field when swarms of Sin's cult try to take you down. And if all of that doesn't work, Johnny's extremities are completely built to take down any threat that stands in your way. With a chainsaw for a leg, missile tracking wrist rockets, and the ability to slow down time, fittingly named Turbo Time by the way, it's, turbo it's no surprise that Johnny Turbo is a very hard person to kill. That is something I not only learned early on, but as the entire game progressed. Throughout the game we can find weapon upgrades and cybernetic implants that will only prolong Johnny's lifespan. Weapon upgrades and implants can be bought after earning enough credits to buy them from little kiosks scattered around the levels and earning credits is pretty easy for a street cleaner. Augments are carefully crafted to cater to your playstyle, and every weapon has a place in any scenario. I usually hate it when a game introduces a weapon that clearly outputs more damage and makes the previous weapons almost disposable, but that doesn't actually exist in Turbo Overkill. I use the dual magnums that you get at the very beginning of the game to take down targets in just about every level. And the way Turbo Overkill achieves this is by giving all the weapons upgrades that not only change the weapons themselves, but create a more viable option. One thing to note is that similar to Ultra Kill, this game allows you to chain together weapons creating a perfect synergy for maximum damage. One of the most satisfying things about this game is creating a build with the augmentations that is not only deadly, but helps keep you alive a lot longer. See, I used implants that would allow me to reuse enemies that I mowed down with my chainsaw legs as armor and health meaning I could kill more and worry less about how my health was looking. I absolutely love the power trip that this game takes you on. It feels like a roller coaster that just keeps ascending, and just when you think you get to the very top, it just keeps climbing. I really enjoy the variety of trash mobs that overload the arenas, but not every enemy will go down so easily though. Some are spongy and resilient, but finding what tactic works best is all the more fun. Chaining weapons and their alternative firing modes along with utilizing your gadgets gives you a nice wide selection of defensive and offensive methods of taking control of just about any situation. This use of multiple utilities at your disposal keeps you grounded in the fight and I was never in too much danger because I had so many options to choose from. The enemies that you'll fight outside of Sin's minions are the three bounty hunters who are sent in to stop you. They all have different techniques, weapon proficiencies, and personalities. In fact, I have to take a second to say that every incredible character in this game has an equally talented voice actor behind them, breathing life into the scenes and even giving some deep moments into the game's plotline. But anyways, let's go back to talking about some of the boss battles. So the bosses in this game usually have phases, and normally I hate having to constantly clear the whole arena of mobs while I fight the boss, but in this game, it's actually a huge opportunity. See. Killing enemies drops ammo and grants you a chance to earn back any much needed health and armor in that exact moment. I found myself flying across the entire level chainsawing enemies as I dash past them just to resupply myself for the next fight. And this constant dance of dodgy between bullets, beams, and missiles while juggling your survivability is just the right amount for a game like this. Not to mention the music fits so well into the scene's aesthetic. One of my favorite ever game mechanics in any game is the movement especially fluid movement. Turbo Overkill has so much verticality to its movement. 
From wall running to one side of the map to the other, to latching onto hooks and enemies with your grab hook to swiftly place your chainsaw leg into the gut of an unexpected victim. The movement is clean and responsive. I even love the in-between segments too. Occasionally, you'll be transferring between these huge play spaces, and the level design is masterfully crafted to make you feel connected to the world around you. Half the time, I'd be exploring the level for secrets and collectibles that felt like a game of hide and seek in itself. Finding the collectibles in this game became a joy because knowing what they gave you would make it all worth it. The blue tech chips would provide you with different earnable cheat codes to toggle on whenever you wanted, and the green cassettes would open up some secret levels giving you even more to play and enjoy. Speaking of more to enjoy, Turbo Overkill actually launched with workshop support on Steam. Meaning, if you wanted to, you can map out and create your own levels for others to play. Or you can even download levels for yourself. This adds not only endless replayability that you can get out of other people's content, but it also increases the lifespan of this game exponentially. This is honestly one of the best boomer shooters I have ever had the pleasure of playing. Not only does it highlight some of the most iconic shooters from my childhood, but it also is in a league of its own. I want nothing but success for the team over at Trigger Happy Interactive because this should be the example others follow when creating a modern day boomer shooter. If you've been with me for a while, you would already know that with these review videos that I make, I try really hard not to spoil a whole lot. This is a game that I actually found really hard not to spoil. It's the type of game that you need to play for yourself to fully understand. But I can promise you that it will leave you satisfied and wanting more just like it. And for an indie game that only costs 25 bucks, you can get an exceptional title that provides more quality than most AAA titles today. Anyways, I really want to go after some of the collectibles that I missed, so I'm going to go do that. My name is Zen, thank you for coming by, and I hope to see you again real soon. Take care.